Now the International Space Station Expedition 64 is at its full crew complement of seven people with the arrival of Crew-1, the next major event for the outpost will be to welcome the first second-generation cargo resupply ship. Called CRS-21, this vehicle is designed to send more cargo to the ISS than its older predecessor, and is even more reusable than the first-generation Dragon spacecraft. SpaceX's first-generation Dragon spacecraft flew its final mission in the spring of 2020. Its design helped inform its next version of Dragon, which has two variants, crew and cargo. The crewed variant has now flown twice with people aboard, with the most recent occurring in mid-November, when the four Crew-1 astronauts lifted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and docked with the International Space Station about a day later. Cargo Dragon is very similar to Crew Dragon. The design, though, doesn't have the eight Super Draco engines that are only used for launch aboard if humans are aboard. Additionally, the windows have been removed as there is no need for experiments to see the view outside. Only two of the four fins on the trunk section remain for the cargo variant. This is likely to give just a little bit more area for solar cells to be built into the side of the trunk. The inside, as you can imagine, is also stripped of anything not needed, including seats, more advanced life support equipment, the vehicle's flight control panel, etc. For the CRS-21 mission, its primary purpose is to launch the Nanorax Bishop Airlock module to the ISS, as well as several thousand kilograms of various science experiments and other equipment. Bishop is the first commercially funded airlock module to be launched to the ISS. It was designed by Nanorax and is being built by that company with the help of Thalassolania Space and Boeing, both of which have had ample experience in designing, building, and flying space station modules. The purpose of this commercial airlock is to allow NanoRacks the ability to increase satellite deployment capabilities at the ISS. Currently those are typically done via the Japanese experiment module's equipment airlock. Its use is limited, however, prompting the company to seek a long-term solution. Part of NanoRack's business model is to allow all sorts of companies and organizations access to the facilities at the ISS. One of the most common things done by the company is deploying small CubeSats from the space station. Bishop can not only be used to deploy objects, it can also host external payloads via mounts on the airlock and can be used to expose experiments to the vacuum of space for long periods of time. According to NASA, it can even be used for jettisoning large pieces of unneeded equipment from inside the ISS, as well as bring inside large orbital replacement units for potential repair in a pressurized environment. Overall, Bishop has a mass of about 1,059 kilograms. It's about 1.8 meters tall and just over 2 meters wide. It has an internal volume of nearly 4 cubic meters, which can be accessed by ISS crew members via a common berthing mechanism door. While it can be located at many spots across the outpost, its primary home is expected to be the port side of the Tranquility module. Outside, there are two grapple fixtures to allow the Canadian robotic arm to move it around the exterior of the ISS and mount it at different locations, including the mobile base system on the main truss of the ISS. NASA and Nanorax agreed to the development of this airlock in May 2016 via a Space Act agreement. CRS-21 is set to launch atop a previously flown Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The first stage being utilized is Core B-1058, which previously launched the Demo-2 Crew Dragon mission into space in May 2020 to send NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken to the International Space Station. After that, the booster was used to launch a commercial satellite called Anasys-2 in July before being used to send another set of 60 Starlink Internet satellites into orbit for SpaceX in October. CRS-21 will be the fourth flight of this booster. After it's done its job in sending Cargo Dragon toward orbit, it is expected to land on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, located some 623 kilometers downrange. Once in orbit, Cargo Dragon will take about a day to rendezvous with the ISS and dock at the Outpost's International Docking Adapter 3, which is located on the space side of the Harmony module. Not only will it be the first vehicle to use the Zenith International Docking Adapter, it will also be the first time two Dragon spacecraft will be at the ISS at the same time, and the first time three commercial crew or cargo spacecraft will be attached, as Northrop Grumman's NG-14 Cygnus spacecraft is still expected to be berthed at the Earth-facing port of the Unity module at least until mid-December. Overall, CRS-21 Dragon is slated to carry about 3,000 kilograms of supplies and equipment to the ISS. In addition to the Bishop Airlock module, the spacecraft is bringing several new science experiments for the crew to perform. One such is the bio-asteroid investigation. The goal of this study is to provide researchers a better understanding of basic physical processes – gravity, convection, and mixing – that control the way liquids mix with rocks and microbes. 
NASA said the hope is for this experiment to inform biomining and how astronauts can use microbes to extract economically interesting elements from extraterrestrial rocks, or even break down those rocks into soils for plant growth or components of a life support system. The investigation, which is a follow-up to the European Space Agency's BioRock study, seeks to provide researchers with an increased fundamental knowledge of biomining and biofilm behavior on rocks and soils. Also aboard is the HemoQ demonstration. It will see an astronaut test a commercially available device's ability to provide quick and accurate counts of total and differentiated white blood cells in microgravity. NASA said, information gained from a device like this on Earth helps doctors diagnose illnesses and monitor a number of health conditions. Verifying that this analytical tool, which was developed on the ground for Earth-based applications, also works in microgravity would be important for astronauts aboard the ISS, as well as future crews on deep space missions to the Moon or Mars. NASA is also sending brain organoids to the ISS. The space agency said these brain organoids, which are grown from neurons and exhibit normal processes such as stimuli and stress responses, are like a miniaturized version of a human brain during early development. The goal is to better understand how microgravity affects the survival, metabolism, and features of brain cells, including rudimentary cognitive functions. Researchers say they hope the knowledge gained can help them make better human models for regenerative disorders. According to NASA, there is no way to do this type of research on Earth. There are a variety of other experiments aboard the vehicle that will also be performed by the ISS crew throughout their multi-month stay. You can learn more about them here at this link. For the CRS-21 Dragon, however, it's expected to remain docked for about a month before undocking, likely after the Expedition 64 crew reloads the spacecraft with unneeded equipment and trash. After leaving the space station, it is expected to perform a deorbit burn and splash down off the coast of Florida in either the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. CRS-21 marks the first flight for SpaceX under NASA's second commercial resupply services contract. It will also be the 24th launch in 2020 for the company. Following its CRS-21 mission, this particular capsule is expected to be used again for a future cargo mission. What are you most looking forward to for the CRS-21 mission? Are you more excited to see the new commercial airlock installed? Or are you more excited to see the new science experiments that the now seven-person space station crew get to perform? Let me know in the comments below. And if I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and share this video and others with friends and family. It helps support the channel and also lets me know what topics you are all interested in regarding human space exploration. You can also follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. Additionally, you can visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, Ad Astra.